Hey everyone, welcome to this advanced compositing tutorial about creating complex shadows in Nuke. So you might be wondering why this is an advanced tutorial and you're seeing a cube here sitting on the ground. Um, and if you guys are familiar with basic CG compositing, taking an alpha and kind of multiplying it down against a plate, um, you might not know that it can get a little bit more complicated than that. And uh, this is an example of where this kind of happens. So we have this cube here sitting and it's passing across some other shadows. So we have what are called double shadows. And basically we don't want to create a double shadow in those areas, otherwise it's not gonna look right. So if we look at the traditional way of doing this, um, I'll go to a little example here. This would be method one. So I'm gonna split this into different methods and talk about some things. Um, as well as some uh, advanced methods, we can make this look a little bit better as well. But if we want to just look at the basic method, uh, we have a normal alpha. It's kind of a crappy one, but good enough for the tutorial. I've just kind of eroded it and graded it to kind of make that a little bit better. And uh, a slight edge blur, and then we just kind of stick it on, on the plate with a grade, and uh, we have a cube. And if we just let that play, uh, we can immediately, hopefully immediately see the problem. And basically we have a double shadow, which um, that's not what's gonna happen in real life. And so we need to deal with this as a compositor. Um, so one way of doing it would, and I kind of made this one yellow because sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Um, this would be the quick solution if you wanna quickly just try to get something real fast. Uh, what you could do is take the footage, um, take again that same grade, but stencil out uh, the dark areas uh, from that grade. So we would stencil it and that kind of works, but it doesn't give the best edges sometimes and we can see it's not blending uh, perfectly. So that's not, <clears throat> that's not the best way of doing it. Um, and then we can talk about uh, this method. So it's a shadow clean plate. There's many ways to do this. Um, some people are using some advanced uh, merge operations. I've seen some people talk about that online. My method is pretty straightforward. It's uh, relatively simple, but there might be better ways. Uh, but in general, it's worked for me. So this is what I'm gonna talk about in this uh, example. So before I get into the, the full method, <clears throat> this would be, this is what we're gonna talk about as well. So shadow attenuation, uh, I've made a full video on this, but um, your first instinct when you're compositing this cube might be to simply uh, kind of blur this cube to match the shadow of the plate. And that wouldn't actually be correct because we have to understand what's happening with shadows in real life in order to composite them uh, realistically. So yeah, go check out that video. It's one of the first ones I posted, but basically it's this concept, which is um, it's not only the light size that determines the softness of a shadow, it's also the distance to the object. So this is a pretty good example scene because we have this tree where if we look at the shadow, uh, if we look at the base of it, it's about this thick. We can kind of uh, circle the attenuation here, the, the feathering. And we can look here and it's a little bit smaller. And then towards the base, it's starting to get sharp. So we know that it's pretty much direct sunlight and it's giving us sharp shadows, but the taller and further away that shadow is from the object casting it, uh, the softer that becomes. So we'll kind of talk about briefly how to make that and then also um, some other things I did with the shadow that makes it a little bit better than just a CG shadow on a plate, which is um, I've kind of faked some reflections in this cube. So if we look at the original CG cube, uh, let's go here just to the basic comp. We can see it doesn't feel like this light is kind of interacting with the cube. Um, so what I've done is kind of rotoscoped in and created this fake reflection from where the really bright areas are. So that just kind of gives us the illusion that there's a, you can actually see a reflection of the ground and kind of a reflection of the shadow. So I've kind of just rotoed that and then also on this side as well. We have this really blown out area. So we just want to integrate that a little bit better with some, some grades. So those are all things we can do. And the last thing that we can do is if we let this play, this still feels uh, pretty CG if you just look at the, the original. And one of the reasons is, this is is because the shadow is perfectly casting onto a flat ground and usually CG grounds are going to be flat. They're not going to be matching perfectly. So what you can do is do some eye transforms and some noise patterns to kind of make this uh, shadow ripple across the surface. So you see these trees, uh, there's kind of indentation into the road. So we want that uh, CG to kind of copy that. So if we play this, we can see that it's kind of changing shape. If you look closely at the edge, it's kind of uh, rolling across the surface of this dirt road 
or or kind of appears to be. So we're kind of giving the, the illusion of that. So I'm gonna talk about the method now and kind of go through this part. Um, so this is the more advanced part. Um, we're gonna talk about the color space we can work in here. So basically what this method consists of is we want to create a, rather than just grading down and using a multiply, we want to create what's called like a shadow clean plate. Um, and essentially what that looks like is something like, something like this. So we want to grade our footage in a way that kind of flattens it out. So we want to squash the highlights um, and kind of roll them off and get them really close to um, where the shadows are. So this method kind of does that. And then we basically will just mask that through our alpha. So we have our alpha of our, our cube, uh, our shadow. And we're just going to mask that queen plate and merge it over. So that's what's going to give us this better result. So basically how you do this, uh, you have the footage and you want to convert it to uh, HSV. So if we convert it to HSV, a color space node, and you switch the out to HSV. Um, and what this space is, is uh, hue, saturation, and value. So hue is stored in the red channel. Saturation is stored in the green channel. And uh, value, basically luminance, is stored in the blue channel. And the reason we're doing this is because we want to only roll off the highlights, but not really affect the color. So what, what we're doing essentially is just separating the colors from the luminance. And uh, it's pretty much as simple as that. So what we want to do now is do a kind of a Luma key stack. So we basically just copy and paste this like a whole bunch of times. So if we do this, um, the way to do this is really simple. You just put a keyer node. Uh, and again, only paying attention to the blue channel in this color space. Uh, put the keyer node, put a grade node, plug it into the mask. Don't even, you just leave that default settings most of the time, and then you can just set the gain to 0.5. And that, and that's what we're gonna copy and paste. So basically you wanna do that and just copy and paste it a whole bunch of times until we get like a really flat image. So if we just step through in the viewer, I'm just gonna step down this kind of chain here and we can see if you watch the highlights um, that they become more and more flat and closer to the shadow area. So I'm gonna step down, there's like a whole bunch of them here. Um, so I'll just go down all the way to the bottom. So now you see we have all this detail here but it feels really flat and there's not like a big, I mean it's not perfect but it gets you pretty close. So at the end here, the last thing you'll do is you wanna copy back in the red and the green channel from the original, which is again, we talked about in the hue uh, saturation value. We're just copying the hue and saturation uh, back into this chain because we don't wanna affect the colors uh, of the image with all of these uh, corrections, just the luminance. So we copy that back in. Uh, I've done a little bit of a blur because it just helps uh, kind of hide the edge that we're kind of combining there. Um, and then what we do is uh, convert that back. So the color space node again, but now it says in hue saturation value because that's what we're working in and out is linear. So we're going back into the original color space that we were in. And essentially we have something like this. So we have uh, the original footage and this darkened uh, shadow plate, I guess you could call it. So we could close this and uh, take a look at what that looks like. So. One other thing I did was, uh, so I did a slight color correction as well because I wanted to make it a little bit blue because if we look at the original shadows of the plate, they have a little bit of a slight blue tint, uh, cooler colors in there. So basically I just want to do that. And one thing you want to also do is, uh, I'll show you in a second here, let me just, so we'll mask it off and go to the original and let that play. And that's what that kind of looks like. I think my cache is loading there. That's why you're seeing some glitches. But if we let that load for a second, we can see that's working pretty well. So one thing I didn't mention in that kind of uh, part there was uh, this. So one thing I do with the shadow clean plate is I try to maintain as much of the original footage as possible. So if I just do the shadow clean plate and I disable these two nodes here, you'll see that as my shadow crosses where the real shadows are, um, we're getting a little bit of a shift in contrast and texture, which we don't really want because that's not kind of breaks the illusion. Um, so we want to maintain just those areas. So what I usually do is kind of just um, take a key mix node and take the original uh, shadows and kind of rotoscope them. So I just want to keep those areas and I key mix that on top of the shadow plate. So this is the shadow plate 
and you can see in the shadow plate we have a little bit of artifacts and some stuff in the darker areas and we can really easily fix that by just bringing in the original shadows so that's all we're doing just kind of combine those two shadow clean plate with the real shadows and so if we look at uh, this result we get this nice um, effect here so one other thing that i did uh let me just go back here um so these i've kind of labeled everything in the script so if you guys download it uh, it's, it should be all pretty clear i didn't want to create it from scratch because there's a lot of things here and it would be a very long video um, but if i explain it hopefully you guys will be able to go through and um, kind of practice your, yourself and look at the script as well so some of the other things going on here, uh, I did a little bit of a shadow attenuation here, which is using an eye blur. This is a custom node of Nucopedia. Um, it just basically blurs things in a more realistic way. I, I, I'm not gonna do a whole video on it right now, but basically this is better than a feather. Um, it just feathers it off in a way that kind of uh, fades off similar to in a, shadow, a shadow attenuation. So I'll stick that at the top of the script as well if you guys wanna download that. I think the note is by, let me just see, uh, looks like Moritz Ish, if I'm saying that correct. So that's who created that. Um, really useful note. So definitely, definitely recommend getting that. So basically, if you look at it, uh, I've just done a feather with a roto, and then I'm just kind of uh, softening the further away part and keeping the base sharp, because again, shadow attenuation. Uh, another thing I did was to get this shadow rolling across the surface and not feeling flat like that. Um, I've, di I've done the eye distort method. So basically we're just taking a noise pattern like this, um, slightly pushing the blacks into the negatives. So the way eye distort works is it, it wants negative values. Um, it wants positive and negative values to push the pixels left and right. So basically we turn off the black clamp, we shove it down a little bit and uh, we can blur it slightly. And then what I've done is just copy the red into the backward U channel and the green into the backward V channel. Um, and these are two just empty channels, but uh, so there's nothing there. We're just kind of putting something in that channel and this channel. And then we're just putting the uh, eye distort and set the eye distort to the backward channel. Uh, and that will use that channel to distort the image. So we're gonna, basically we're just distorting the image by that noise pattern that we've created. So if you look at the edges and now you look at the edges, uh, as this thing goes, it's going to basically distort along the, that pattern. Um, one other thing I did was a little bit of an eye transform. Again, another custom node I'll put at the top of the script. Um, and I kind of just, I could see this like ridge of dirt here. So all I did was I put a little roto shape here and then just shoved any pixels that cross that ridge up a little bit. So as it crosses, the shadow will kind of bend just across that uh, little dirt ridge there. And that just gives it a tiny bit more realism. So that's how we got the shadow. And then um, some other things I did, if I go to the final thing here, um, I added a little bit of ambient occlusion. So if I look at it without and with, um, this is just a fake ambient occlusion. I don't have a render here for it. So I just kind of faked it. And that just helps uh, sell kind of the edge where it's contacting. You're always gonna have a little bit of darker edge where uh, you're contacting edges and that's gonna help us sit in uh, quite a lot. And um, basically, yeah, so if you look at the blacks of some of these rocks, like it's a little bit darker. So we can go darker than the, the shadows of these trees. Um, there's a lot of bounce light in the scene, so the shadow shouldn't be super dark because we see that everything is not super dark, but in the crevices, you can see uh, the, the very darkest parts do go kind of darker. So we, can, we have a little bit of room to go darker um, with that. So, how did I do the ambient occlusion? Um, relatively straightforward. We just take a the cube alpha, and uh, I've, got, I've kind of just blurred it outwards, and then masked it uh, by the shadow. So let me say that again. Here's the shadow. Here's the blurred cube, and then just masking it. So uh, essentially, that's just giving us like a, a little bit of an edge within the shadow alpha. So we're creating a dark edge where the two objects are meeting. Uh, and stepping through, um, I, if you see these expression nodes in here, I'm, I'm really only using them as a, the same as a shuffle node, basically. Um, so for example, I wanted to put the red channel into the alpha channel because I was doing those corrections uh, in this kind of RGB area. 
but I want them to be in the alpha channel because that's what I'm using to uh, drive this uh, color grade because it's looking at the mask uh, RGBA.alpha. So that's how I did this. Um, again, I used like an inverted Luma key. So that's like the technique I talked about earlier uh, to just protect some of the little rocks and stuff that it crosses over. I don't want to over darken anything with this uh, ambient inclusion. So if we step down further, uh, this is the cube. I'll just talk about how I graded it real quick here and then that will be it for the tutorial. Um, so we have this original cube here. Uh, yeah, the background is kind of baked into the original render. So if I, hit, if I put a pre-malt on here, um, it's, it's basically doing that. So it's just how I render out of, out of Arnold, just a real quick render um, and the image plane was sort of baked in there. Um, not completely intentional, but it's just quick and easy. So there's our cube. We pre-multiply it, pre it and um, you know that's, that's what we have. So one thing I needed to do was if I pre-multiplied that, and merge it over the original image. Let me just show you. If I pre-multiplied CG, put it over the original image. Um, it's hard to tell here, but there's a little bit of a bright edge in the CG, kind of just a little bright edge on the bottom there. And that's an easy fix. We can just do an edge extend. So I've just done an edge extend, which kind of pushes out the uh, edges around. And that, that will basically just, if I pre-multiply it, it gets rid of that bright edge. So if I compare, you see the bright edge and then now the bright edge is gone. So just a little CG fix. Um, brighten the top, uh, shadows on top. So I did some rotos to just very slightly um, adjust the, basically, uh, let me just put it over the background so we can see. We'll just put it like this and put it like this. Uh, okay. So these corrections, I was just kind of brightening the, the top here because the shadow on the top wasn't really matching kind of the, the plate. So it was kind of too, too dark. Um, so I just wanted to balance that out a little bit better, kind of brighten up the shadow a little bit and maybe brighten up the highlights very slightly. And then I wanted to add some fake reflections. So looking at this frame is a good example. It, it looks kind of flat still. So if I switch the pre to here, you see that I've kind of just rotoscoped uh, a little bit of a fake reflection here. And this lines up with the CG shadow. So it looks kind of weird here, but if you look at it over the final comp, it looks correct. So that rotoscope lines up with um, the CG shadow. So if I just move that out of the way, that's all it's doing. It's just brightening, um, but I don't want to put a brightening everywhere because now it just looks weird. Um, you just want to put it right on the edge like this and then it starts to look like a, an actual reflection of uh, the ground that it's kind of sitting on. And yeah, so these, these are all some little tiny tweaks after that, um, nothing new information, so I won't go on too much more. Um, a box adjustment at the very end and then the pre-multiply. Um, and then of course we can do a key uh, keyer of the highlights, pre-multiply it and put a glow, uh, just to bloom out the highlights of that um, that box. So it feels like it's really bright um, because this is a really bright scene. So it's kind of overexposed. So we're going to get more glow because of the, ex of the exposure. So if we just turn that off and on, you see that just kind of helps it sit uh, in that scene. And then just some fake camera movement and, uh, you know, basically some extra stuff there. But that's basically it. Um, the script is in the description below. Um, if you guys aren't already subscribed, I'd really appreciate it or hit the like button if you thought it was useful. Um, and yeah, there'll be more on the way.